It's been popular media spin that Georgia is turning blue. But is it right? You're about to find out. The answer? Absolutely and unequivocally, no. Especially after two years of the Biden administration. Let me first thank our sponsors, The Absolute Truth with Emerald Robinson. And because this is a sponsored poll, you can get the cross tabs at our website. Go get them and follow along because I'm not gonna be able to cover all of this by myself. Okay, first up, the governor's race. We have Brian Kemp beating Stacey Abrams by 10 points. And that's pretty big news because it's the biggest lead anybody's given him. And he is now over the 50% mark. Independents are a big part of the story here because in 2018, Stacey Abrams won the independent vote by 10 points. But look at the party responses here. Brian Kemp is now up 17 points among independent voters. Stacey Abrams only picks up 81% of her own party's vote, but Brian Kemp has 87% of the Republican vote, and he has a three-point edge with crossover voters. Next up is the Senate race, and we have Herschel Walker beating Raphael Warnock by five points, and Warnock's in the low 40s right now. 4% of the Georgian electorates would pick a third party, and another 4% still say not sure. But part of the big news here is that this is the biggest lead that any pollster has given Herschel Walker, and he is now within spitting distance of the 50% he needs to avoid a runoff. Herschel Walker is doing almost as good as Brian Kemp is among independent voters, but he's doing 10 points worse with voters of his own party. If anybody's down there in Georgia can tell me why that is, leave your thoughts in the comments. He's doing slightly worse among white and black voters than Kemp, but he's doing way better among Hispanics. Check out that 16 point lead he has. I've been speaking in other videos about the general battleground trend that I've seen where the candidates underperform the generic ballot, but Trump outperforms. Georgia slightly bucks that trend here because the generic ballot, the Republicans have a lead of 10 points, whereas in a hypothetical Biden-Trump rematch, Trump only wins by eight points among Georgian voters. Where are Republicans outperforming Trump? They're doing one point better with black and white voters, four points better with women and 40 plus voters, five points better with Republicans, and 13 points better with Hispanic and independent voters. But check this out, Trump does better than Republicans with 18 to 39 year olds by a point and better with Democrats by 10 points. Takeaways, let's hear your thoughts in the comments. The Republican candidates for Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of State also have commanding leads, but those races have a higher level than the Senate and Governor of not sure and third party responses. Nonetheless, by election day, those leads should hold up. Now, a large portion of this poll was focused on election integrity questions. As followers of ours will know, a strong majority of nationwide likely voters think that it's likely that cheating affected the outcome of the 2020 election. The electorate in Georgia is no different, but they are much more trusting than one would suspect of their own electoral systems and elected officials. One standout point to me, however, is that Georgian voters give Republicans a six point edge in trust on the issue of election integrity. And that's something because usually for this kind of question, Republicans say Republicans, Democrats say Democrats, and independents don't trust either party to handle those issues. The electoral issue questions in this poll were very interesting. Here they are broken down by party and ranked highest to lowest by the number of voters who say very concerned. Now keep in mind there's also somewhat concerned out there. So if you look at Republicans for instance, most of those numbers would wind up in the low 90s or high 80s. Republicans in Georgia are just way more concerned about these issues than their counterparts in either the Democrat Party or independents. Republican voters in Georgia are most concerned about the economy with illegal immigration and violent crime in a not too distant second and third place. And that pretty much mirrors the pattern that we've seen with Republicans nationwide. Independent voters in Georgia have very similar concerns as Republicans, but if you look at the numbers, the numbers are about 20 points lower than the Republicans are. They're just not as concerned. But check out Democrats. Abortion rights is far and away the largest issue 
they can't even get to 40% with gas prices, violent crime, and the economy. Now that's really different nationwide where Democrat voters really do care about those issues. So looking at these numbers, I can only say that Democrat voters in Georgia are pretty much only being motivated by the issue of abortion. At the end of the poll, we also asked a few questions about the FBI. Like nationwide voters, voters in Georgia give the FBI pretty low marks. And in Georgia, a majority of voters, like nationwide, at least somewhat agree that the FBI is being used as Joe Biden's personal Gestapo. But here's a question that we haven't asked before. Though he hasn't been criminally charged or even accused of a crime, the phone of MyPillow CEO Mike Lindell was seized by the FBI. Do you approve or disapprove of his phone being seized? Georgians are comically divided on this one. Seriously, look at those numbers. Here are the party results, if that helps you make a conclusion. Republicans are pretty strongly against his phone being seized, but Republicans do traditionally have a pro-law enforcement component. And perhaps there are Republicans who agree with the action because of their opinions of Mike Lindell. Democrats are really strongly for the phone seizure, with more than twice as many of them strongly approving than other voters, but not all of them approve. 19% disapprove, but only 7% of them strongly disapprove of the phone seizure. Compared to 35% of independents and 50% of Republicans, that's a really stark difference. Now, the question didn't get into specifics about what investigation was being conducted or whether there was a search warrant or, or any of that. So primarily, I suspect that the signal is a result of somebody's general overall opinions of the FBI, which for Democrats are very high, versus someone's overall opinion of Mike Lindell, which for Democrats are probably pretty low. But it's hard to look at those numbers and think anything other than a prominent political figure in opposition to the Democrat Party was targeted by the FBI and they cheered about it. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. And if you can come up with any situation where the reverse happened, I'd love to poll on it. Thank you for following our content. If it's been informative for you, please click the subscribe button so you can get more of the same kind of coverage. Thank you.